Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. Yes, 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 yes. This is crazy. Nine straight victories. And I'll be honest with you, the Flyers played like crap. They did not deserve to win this game against the Buffalo Sabres at all. I believe that the Sabres outplayed them. They competed harder than them. 98% of the game was totally in favor of Buffalo. But when things go right, things really go right. And I have to, have to, have to, have to give pretty much essentially all of the praise to Carter Hart. Because without Carter Hart, this is a totally different story. 38 saves on the night. 38 saves on the night. And when you look at his save percentage, 974. He was insane. He was nuts. The first period, how many... Grade A scoring chances did the Sabres have? 37 million, and he came up with all of them. He kept the Flyers in right from the jump. The Flyers, they couldn't make any passes tape to tape. Their D zone was abysmal. It truly was a really bad game for the Flyers. The energy was lethargic. Their feet were slow. It was like they were in quicksand. It was an ugly watch. Now, it's hard to get mad at them while it's happening based off of the recent success that they had. I mean, you go on an eight-game win streak. At some point, you would think they would have one of those games where it's not pretty and it's not smooth, and it was this game. The thing is, though, because of elite goaltending, they squeeze through, and and this fan base and this franchise, I just mixed the words together and said fan base, the fan base and the franchise, they're not used to having this type of net minding. That was spectacular. That's the type of goalie that puts franchises in playoff mode every single year. That That is so special, what the 21-year-old kid just did in the net. Buffalo had power plays left and right in the third period, three to be exact. Scott Lawton goes in the box twice. Now, the second one that was caught on him was a little soft, but I've been a little disappointed in Scott Lawton when it comes to taking penalties over the last three games or so. I think he needs to to be smarter. He's taking somewhat lazy, dumb stick penalties as of late. Now, he's been also producing on the offensive side and being one hell of a skill guy at the same time, but you got to stay out of the box. I don't like what he's been doing. Going back to taking all the penalties and Carter Hart on the PK, it was insane. Insane. That was one of the greatest performances this season by the young kid. And I'm stunned watching the game. Stunned. Because I don't know what this is like. This is so new to me. Having someone I can trust in the net. And then I date this back to Elaine Vigneault. Going with the nod for Brian Elliott against the Washington Capitals. And a lot of fans questioned that. They wanted to see Carter Hart in a big moment on the road. I think by now we understand the splits. The home and road splits for Carter Hart. He is significantly better at home. So the fans wanted to see the kid coming out of a game in Madison Square Garden in Washington, D.C. to see if he can do it again, to see if he can perform well in a hostile environment in Madison Square Garden. I'm sorry, that was after the Madison Square Garden game in Capital One Arena. But the reason why he played tonight is because the way Elaine Vigneault structured out the schedule, structured out the game plan. And I don't know if this game would have been won if Brian Elliott was in the net. The type of saves Carter Hart was making, and give credit to Brian Elliott for everything he's done this season, but with some of these scoring chances that Buffalo had, They were elite chances. Breakdowns by the Flyers in the D zone. Here comes a ton of rushes. I don't know if many goalies in this league can put on a performance like that. Of course, there are some. I'm not blowing this out of proportion. There are a handful of guys that can really steal games like that. I'm not trying to make it seem like Carter Hart is the only goalie in the world that can put on a sick 38 save performance with a 974 save percentage. It has totally been done by a lot of great netminders in this league. 
In that moment, though, would Brian Elliott? I don't know if he would, and that's not a knock on him. I'm really just trying to praise Elaine Vigneault for the way he structured this stretch. He always pushes the right buttons, it seems. Now, there's more to talk about when it comes to this game. <clears throat> Claude Giroux, ew. But before we do, we need to hear a word from my sponsor, SeatGeek. If you are looking to go to a Flyers game or a Sixers game, <laughs> or any game out there, or even a concert. You can use the promo code BRODES at SeatGeek's checkout page for $20 off of your total purchase. That is free parking. It is a no-brainer. Use the promo code BRODES today. So Captain Claude. Captain Claude comes up big time. Now, I, I don't know if many people played well in this game, to be honest with you. I know because the Flyers won, the mindset on the on the game is different. Well, great teams find ways to win, and that is true. But it was sloppy. It was ugly. I don't know if they competed hard. It, it really was an abysmal effort at times. But Claude Giroux stepped up when needed. When needed, when there was an opportunity, he delivered. Now, credit Jake Voracek for racking a couple assists up. Travis Sandheim as well. It was literally the same scoring play on the stat sheet both times the Flyers scored. So in the second period, the Flyers find a way. Claude Giroux back door on his backhand just gets it over Hutton. But it was a nice feed from Voracek to get it over to him. And Sanheim recorded the secondary assist. one nothing Flyers. Right before the second period ended, the late second period, a breakdown in the D zone by the Flyers leads to a Sabres goal. It was... Who scored that goal? It was actually a really nice tic-tac-toe play. Cahoon. Bang, bang, bang. Your eyes are just following the puck. And before you know it, Carter Hart is left out to dry. No defenseman back door. No help down low. And it was in the back of the net with ease. Easy wide open net just to throw it and hit the twine. So tied hockey game going into the third period. I was tweeting along as the game was going, as I always do. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, at Broads81, for great Philadelphia sports content, I advise that you should do that. But my first period analysis, it was a picture of Carter Hart smiling in the locker room, all goofy. My second period analysis was a gif of Michael Scott from the office cringing. I just didn't like the effort. So the first period, I was all pumped that Carter Hart saved the day. I wasn't happy with the Flyers' team effort as a whole, but I was so happy with Carter Hart's play. The second period, it was tied 1-1. Happy they scored. Not happy they let one up, but it was an ugly look. It didn't have a good vibe. The game screamed, Sabres are going to win. Get into the third period. Claude Giroux, halfway through, in the slot, gets a feed from Voracek. Ew, bang, finds a way to put a past Hutton. Halfway through the third, when things didn't look pretty, gave the Flyers to lead. Now, it's maintained this bad boy. It's not to the point where you go on your heels and allow the other squad to continue to get rushes. I'm not saying it like that, but, you know, listen, you got the lead. There's about half of the period left. Do what you need to do. Hit the red line, get it deep. Play a good D zone. Now, ultimately, they started taking penalties, and that did not make me happy whatsoever. But maintain it. Maintain it. Don't allow any goals. Don't allow any goals. Well, what ended up happening was the Sabres have the puck in their D zone. They try and pass it to their goalie, Hutton. Hutton's in the crease with the puck on his stick. And here comes Joel Farabee, full speed, gets his stick on it, puts it in. And Hutton had no clue what the hell just happened. And Farabee deserved that goal. Because in this game, he got robbed once. And in the last handful of games, he got robbed. He has gotten robbed over the last couple games. He deserved that goal. He really did. Now, now that I'm thinking about it, though, when JVR got hurt, it was against two of the Caps. So it was only one game. One game before this. It seems like he's been playing way more than that, honestly. It's only been one game after the Caps game. But he had great scoring chances. Great scoring chances. 
He's been working hard. He's been involved. He's been passing the eye test. You see him. You notice him. He is a player that's making plays, who's working his tail off. And eventually, you would think the puck would finally go in. Now, I question sometimes when I see Farabee going out there and getting robbed or not executing perfectly. I wonder if JVR was in that spot, if those are automatic. Like, is the difference... Joel Farabee not being as good of a goal scorer, him being inexperienced, or in those couple moments, the goaltender's really just making that great of a play. I think it's a combination of both. But that's the difference in when I talk about an experienced guy like JVR in those situations burying the biscuit rather than Joel Farabee, who is a nice young player that I can't wait to watch groom into something special because he obviously has the talent. That's not what I'm saying. But there are a couple times where backdoor, he doesn't find a way to get it past the, the, the goalie's far pad. Or he's in the slot wide open, the puck bounces right on this stick, he puts it right into the bread basket. Things like that. Would JVR make a more experienced move? Maybe with poise, he holds, he waits, he waits, he waits, he dishes backdoor. Or he waits, he waits, he waits, he pushes it towards his forehand and then goes and beats the goalie that way. Or will he just pick a corner? Is is there a difference? I'm not knocking Joel Farabee. I'm just asking a question. And it is possible. It is possible that JVR in those spots would deliver. He is known to be a legit goal scorer in this league. Held Eichel scoreless. That's no easy task. He's a fun watch. He's a super future superstar. He's an electric player. He can do some damage with the puck. He is entertaining to watch, no doubt about it. It was weird to see Wayne Simmons in the Buffalo Sabres jersey. He's been bounced around since that trade with the Flyers, and it was time. It was absolutely time. Flyers fans, Philadelphia fans, they get tied emotionally to specific players. Last season, moving on from him what was a was a move that I really liked. They acquired Ryan Hartman. Hartman then left. They got Tyler Pitlick, and Tyler Pitlick has been a phenomenal player. For his role, he's been outstanding to the point where I want to keep him with the Fly Guys moving forward. I think he can be a very valuable piece. I remember looking at his numbers when he got moved here, and I was just concerned that he couldn't stay healthy. When he is healthy, you can see his point production is there. For his limited role, his numbers are spectacular. And I thought his role was his role was on display. Block some shots out there. This team was blocking shots. Now that happened. Justin Braun took one off the helmet. He also got rocked at the end of the game. I thought that was blown out of proportion by the commentators when you did see the replay. I don't know. I felt like the commentators made it seem like it was so dirty. It was so malicious. Did the stick get involved by his feet? It did, but I don't think it was intentional as if he meant to do that or he was really trying to go after Justin Braun of all people. I just think it was a fluke accident that looked uglier full speed than what it really was. I don't know. I thought it was blown out by the commentators a bit. They, they made it seem like he's so evil. That was clearly his mindset. He was trying to destroy Justin Braun. Ah, come on. Come on. But Braun was blocking shots. Phil Myers blocking biscuits. At one point, he had to kind of crawl back to the bench. Elaine Vigneault was asked about it afterwards, and it almost seemed like he didn't really have a discussion with the the medical team or the trainer yet, as he did miss a couple shifts later in the hockey game. So hopefully he is going to be okay because he took a blistering shot. I liked what this team brought to the table in terms of, of finding a way. At the same time, though, not in love with it totally, expected a game like this eventually. The crazy part is when I expected it to happen, I didn't expect it to result in a win. Now, the Capitals beat the Penguins earlier this afternoon, so the same situation occurs right now as it did before the game. The Flyers and the Caps are tied, but the Caps have the tiebreaker. The positive, though, is the the, the Capitals beat the Penguins, so the Penguins do not gain any points on the Standings. Provorov played 24 minutes and 10 seconds. Are you kidding me? Nonchalant 24-minute night. Just plays all the time. 
I'm so amazed with what he has become. And I knew he was going to be good. But somehow, some way, he reached an even higher expe- a higher level than my expectations. And maybe it had to do with the dreadful season last year. It's remarkable what he does. Every defenseman, except for one, recorded two block shots. Myers ended up having one, but that one was a very noticeable block shot. And here the Bruins have an opportunity to win 10 straight games by hosting the Boston Bruins in South Philadelphia on Tuesday night. That place is going to be rocking. I might actually try and go to that game. Maybe I'll use the promo code bro. Who knows? Hey, maybe you should go to that game. Save 20 bucks off if you do, right? Obviously. <laughs> so I think it is time now to open up the phone lines. The phone number is 856-442-9805, the 24-7 Anytime Hotline. Let's kick it off. This team continues to find ways to get points. Credit that they did not look good at all today. That's a fact, but it's nice to see that you have a goaltender, actually, that can steal games for you, and that's what Carter Hart exactly did. Man, it feels nice to have a goaltender that is actually good in this city. I remember the days of Steve Mason and Taranetta Mackey, uh, Michael Layton. It's been a while since the Flyers fans have had a chance to experience a good goaltender, but Carter Hart stepped up today. Claude Drew stepped up today with his two goals. And good teams find ways to get points and get wins even when they're not at their best. And that's what the Flyers exactly did today. They weren't at their best, but they still found ways to get points. Thank you for taking the call, Broads. Absolutely, and and that is very true. Good teams do find ways to win, even when it is really ugly and really atrocious. Whether it's your goaltender stepping up, whether it's your captain being a leader, and when he has a chance, he's going to make the most of it. You saw, this was the first goal, his emotion, how fired up he was after that bingo. And he was pumped up after the second one too, of course, because that gave them the lead back. So he, he was fired up in both moments. But you see the excitement on his face it's awesome watching Claude Giroux succeed because I've been such a huge fan of his work and his craft. While for some reason, not everybody appreciates what he has brought to the table throughout his career. It's great to see. And and the mentioning of Carter Hart, it's so unbelievable. It really is. The, to imagine that this is real life, to imagine that there is a 21-year-old legitimate stud, stud, Judd, at such a young age, in a Flyers uniform. It seems like a dream. What's going on, Broads? Great win for the Flyers tonight against the Sabres. Carter Hart is just growing up before our very eyes, man. Forget calling him a future star. The kid is a star right now as we speak. I know he still has some trouble on the road, but I, I am firmly confident that he's going to be able to get that together and be a fantastic netminder for this team for at least a decade in the future. It's simple. We don't win a game like this last year or the, or the year before that or the year before that or the year before that because this team has not had a Carter Hart in decades. They've not had a goalie that you can just stick in the net in a game where you've not really been playing your best and you can just, you can just rely on him to come up with big stops and sort of carry you through a game. And Of course, Claude Drew had a couple of huge goals as well, but Carter Hart was definitely the first star of the night tonight. And... I have nothing but faith in him going forward, and I can't wait to see how he does in the playoffs. And let's go for 10 straight against Boston and shut Jack Edwards the hell up. Take care, Broads. (laughs) <laughs> the Jack Edwards hate. There's a hilarious clip going around Twitter right now of this crazy scene that happened in the Boston Bruins lightning game. And Jack Edwards is going crazy on the call. It, it's actually pretty funny. But dating back to, to Carter Hart, and I understand that there's going to be a ton of praise for this kid, as there should be. He is legit right now. You nailed it. It is a right now thing. To think we questioned if it was too early in his career to bring him up last season. Some guys just have it. Some players just have that it factor. And he is going from 
When, when you look at his career, he is going from success to success to success to success. It doesn't matter what level he is playing at. When you look at his junior numbers, when you look at the the world junior numbers, even the time when he spent in the American Hockey League to now in the NHL, it has always been success. So when you see that consistently, there is a telling sign that that player can probably most likely have a great chance of making it happen through the top level possible. And it's really fun to to watch him every single night. What's up, bros? I got Flyers fever. I'm watching old highlights here. Uh, the last time they were in the Cup, 2010, against the Blackhawks. Um, they won both games in Philly. Um, back, I'm watching game four right now. Hell of a game. Um, you know, the, the biggest difference, this team did not have goaltending. Yeah, Michael Layton in there. Um, Michael Layton was terrible on the road in the playoffs. Um, anyways, I like our team now. I like our goaltending now. Um, we're a different team. I'm not saying we're going to the finals this year, but we've got a great chance in the next handful of years, next decade. We've got a good shot to get there, and I think we'll have the goaltending to do it. Absolutely. I like how you're talking about building this thing for a long run. That's a conversation for another day. I want to live in the moment right now, but you're not wrong when you look at the Joel Farabies of the world, Travis Konechny, Ivan Provorov, Sanheim, Myers, Carter Hart. You know, Sean Couturier is still young. He just, he's been playing forever because he started at such a young age. Kevin Hayes is going to be here for years. I mean, you look through this, there are some players that are very young. I mean, it's crazy looking at the age of some of these players, and that's why when I look at it now, the the mix of veterans and young players, it's the perfect mix right now. And I think that is a reason why this team is thriving. Now, it's hilarious to me that you're watching highlights of the Stanley Cup run. That's where this team is at right now. They have the city of Philadelphia watching highlights from 2010 to see the Wells Fargo Center, to see Chris Pronger, Danny Briere, Simone Gagne, and all those players in action just to, to get that feel again because it's possible that that is going to be a feeling in this playoffs. I'm not saying Stanley Cup final run, but I'm just saying the energy involved, you know, making it past at least a round, having that excitement in the city, even though we're dealing with it now, it reaches a whole nother level once rounds get won in the playoffs. It's so comical to me that that's where we're at. And listen, to be honest with you, I've done the same thing, so you are not the only one, and I'm sure that there are plenty of other people doing it too. Oh, Captain, my Captain, Drew helps us snatch victory out of the jaws of defeat tonight. Although I would say the star of the game to me was Carter Hart. If Brian Elliott was in net tonight, I don't think the Flyers win that game. The difference between he and, and Elliott is that Hart can make, you know, the saves when the defense breaks down, whereas Elliott is pretty much straight up. He'll make the routine save routinely, but doesn't usually stand on his head. Again, I'm real interested to see how they play Tuesday against Boston because the last couple games to me, it looks like they've hit a bit of a wall, like they're skating in cement. I mean, I give them credit for overcoming the things that they've overcome the last two games, and I was happy for Joel Farabee because he probably could have had about four goals in the last two games. But, again, interested to see how they come out against Boston, but you take the two points tonight. Now that's freaky. That that is freaky. I don't listen to these calls prior to putting them on the show. And and you mentioned Joel Faraby probably should have having a couple goals prior to that one on Hutton, that fluky play. And you mentioned Brian Elliott not getting the win. Not to put a knock on him, but more praising Carter Hart. And literally the same thing that I mentioned throughout. So it's weird. I think you have a phenomenal mindset. I think you are a very smart individual who thinks a great mind, if I had to say so myself. 
<laughs> I am interested to see how they play against the Boston Bruins as well. This game was sloppy, slow. It looked like they were definitely... <sighs> I don't know the the right way to explain this, but it clearly wasn't their best game. After dominating the last handful, you knew it was going to come, but their feet just looked so slow, and it wasn't like they were making any passes, ugly plays in the neutral zone, ugly plays in the defensive zone. And that's weird because, you know, that that's a mind thing. It's a mind thing. When you're starting to play sloppy, when you're starting to realize things go south— I've seen this team somewhat pick it up and get out of that funk, and I didn't feel like they got out of that funk or picked it up at all. It just so happened that Carter Hart was Carter Hart, and they had just enough, just enough to sneak through and get the victory. But at the end of the day, that's all that matters. That's all that matters right now, keeping up pace with the Capitals, finding a way to maybe get in that first spot. I'd be satisfied with hosting the Pittsburgh Penguins in the first round if the first seed isn't possible. Of course, I'd rather play a wild card team than the Penguins, but I, I I wouldn't mind seeing them with home ice advantage either. Look at me. Look at me. As if I would be not satisfied with the Flyers making the second seed. Oh, Broads, you're so silly. <laughs> with that being said, I can't wait for Tuesday night. I truthfully cannot wait for Tuesday night at all. It's going to be a rocking building. The place is going to be on fire. No pun intended. Fly or die, baby. Fly or die. Will Claude Giroux step up again? Will the captain be the captain on Tuesday? Make a statement against Boston's first line? Will the depth be a factor? Will you see Tyler Pitlick, Raffle, Nate Thompson in the mix? I could see Nate Thompson maybe mixing it up a little bit, getting super physical. Whoo-hoo, whoo. Maybe, maybe we'll have another discussion of Flyers hockey before that game occurs. Maybe, just maybe. So with that being said, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.